Hello my friends and welcome to the metal shop driveway and you are looking at my latest acquisition the latest project in the metal shop it's a Jeep <laughs> you probably figured that out this is a 1995 Jeep YJ uh, the YJ's were made from 1987 through 1995 this is a 95 so it's the last last of the YJ's um, we'll get into more of the more of the specs as we go but anyway so I found this on uh, Craigslist local Craigslist and in shopping for Jeeps I learned that uh, well, there's a lot of junk out there um, a lot of nice stuff too that uh, costs a lot of money but this one um, fell within my price range and I worked with a guy who's uh, built and restored a bunch of Jeeps to give me some guidance and he actually said um, you know for the money that I was looking to spend he's like get a YJ he said believe it or not they're better in a lot of ways than the than the newer TJ's um, the YJ's have galvanized bodies and the, they were the frames held up better than the, than the TJ's so you could look at a brand you know not brand new but a newer you know a 97 through I'm not sure 04 maybe for the TJ's and it'll have holes in the frame you know rust repairs in the frame and uh, the TJ's all rot up in the fenders here so on this as you can see here these are these are pretty nice um, so right off the bat any of you guys are Jeep guys you'll know that this is a uh, this has been painted uh, it's not a uh, Jeep color but boy is it a nice color it is a dark dark green almost looks black in certain lights um, sorry for the wind it's gonna be a little wind uh, this past weekend it was 70 degrees and very humid just about died and today it's not even 50 degrees and I'm in shorts and a t-shirt and on quite honestly I'm freezing my tail off anyway uh, two inch body lift on this and uh, a slight suspension lift I'm thinking as well um, I'm not sure I have to investigate that more uh, you know the big wheels and big tires fake uh, those bead locks are fake um, whoever had this Jeep um, they sold, they sunk a lot of money into it you know uh, it was fully restored frame off restoration approximately five years ago uh, has worn um, bumpers front and back big dollar items there um, worn rock sliders here um, in the back full size spare with a carrier you know worn bumper and carrier in the back I shudder to think of you know what those what those products um, must have cost so again frame off restoration five years ago there is a fair amount of surface rust that has resurfaced um, on the underside and unfortunately the guy bought it from he just had it undercoated so you know he thinks he's doing a good thing and you know and he is had he kept it but now I want to you know scrape the frame and POR the frame and you know undercoat it rhino lining the frame which is what was done and now I have to not only scrape but I have to remove you know all the the undercoating that he that he just put on there but trust me my friends for a Jeep frame you guys who are in the know know that uh, this is pretty nice this is in good shape um, you can see the dog leg in there yeah, that's where they rust and the rhino lining is flaked off but it's it's still still pretty solid up in there um, and I mean just look up just look at the steel up in here I mean it's it's just perfect there you get a look at the uh, two inch two inch body lift um, I found out a little bit of rust on the the wheels it's got to be addressed whether I haven't powder coated or I'll repaint them myself we'll see lots of projects lots and lots of projects on the way home I figured out that uh, nearly impossible to get gas in here I think this is upside down this taillight guard is upside down or um, you know has a bend in it the problem is you can't get the the pump the handle sorry the gas handle won't go in all the way so you, you have to kind of kind of hold it in there and, and pump it in really slowly so there's that uh, I drilled this hole to let water run out of the spare it was holding water and rusting I pulled those grody lug nuts off and put anti-seize on there right away because I've seen too many Jeeps where those things are just on there forever. So why a Jeep? Well, when I was a kid, my dad had a, I don't know, 80 or 81 CJ and that I just loved and I have really fond memories of that. And 
actually his best friend had a blue one my dad's was brown both of them had soft tops and I have you know just the greatest memories of, of those Jeeps and you know my we sold the wife's Miata she got a uh, BMW convertible that's for another for another uh, show another clip for YouTube um, I wanted a convertible I wanted something I could take the top off and go out and I you know I thought I thought about it long and hard you know I really want a Cobra it someday but I'm like you know do I need another car you know I need another car like I need a hole in the head you know what's the answer here um, and I was like why not get a Jeep you know now I can have something that I you know I can have fun with take it off-roading you know do a little little jeeping a little booning whatever you want to call it in the woods with the kids um, and take the, you know the top will come right off it so this one did not come with a soft top just the hard top I know this is it's kind of a it's kind of an oddball um, like I said the guy soak a ton of money into this this is a grant steering wheel full auto meter uh, gauge package um, mastercraft seats both seats and and the rear seat and I priced those out and for the two front seats and the rear mastercraft seats one thousand dollars crazy um, it's got a toughy security box center console and uh, the uh, glove box and curiously enough he did not have them key to like probably purchased them at different times that's annoying doesn't matter because I didn't even get any keys for it anyway so and an Alpine stereo um, and we'll get to that uh, a little bit more in a second here I'm just gonna give a pause and go around to the other side and open it up so the guy I bought this from it was kind of an oddball I said he got it from his uncle but and you can see you know the floor has been all line X um, again big dollar items everywhere uh, the performance I'll pop the hood it's got a Dynamax exhaust and a K&N filter a bunch of painted engine parts a valve cover stuff like that I'll show you that in a minute um, the uh, the roll bar is all line X um, I prefer padding I'm gonna put padding on it but look you got speakers here you've got the uh, the sound bar you know with speakers in it um, again the Mastercraft suspension the seats are actually very comfortable but there's speakers up here in the dash this Jeep has air conditioning because of course you need it <laughs> um, there's the cup holder from the center console I do have a uh, Hurst short shifter kit coming for this be one of the first projects I do so I'll give you another pause and we will open up the back all right let's see if I can do this with one hand this rear spare tire carrier is heavy so the Warren gives you this nice handless walking handle you can pull it and open it up but let's look, I mean just see how clean this is I mean I can't even imagine the, the amount of money spent on this restoration oh so the Tuffy security console you you can uh, before I open this up that's one way so you guys if you're shopping for a Jeep you can tell the difference between a city Jeep and a country Jeep <laughs> you know for lack of a better term city mouse country mouse a city Jeep will have tons of security products locking center console locking glove box locking hood locking tray in the back because they're so easy to for people to steal stuff from country Jeeps don't have these measures because they, people just don't care <laughs> and they just don't you know whatever they don't have the stuff in here but look in the look in the back of this thing so right what every jeep needs is a giant 12 inch sub <laughs> right and this is so this locks i mean this doesn't lock but when you close it and the back is closed and locked you can't open this i think that's made by tuffy too but look at these these are alpine power amps two giant alpine power amps and you can tell from the wiring you know this was professionally done and again big dollar big dollar items but not you know really strange kind of out of place almost in a Jeep I mean it's not how not how I would have done it but whatever so this is kind of weird the, the top just uh, top just closes and then this you close this and you can lock this and now you're all secure so this thing God, I can't even imagine how much this weighs but gotta pick this up there we go locked in place so the guy I bought this from and you know I asked him do you ever off-road it he's like god no he's like it's too nice for that and he was getting ready to put it away for the winter <laughs> never took it off-roading and was getting ready to put it up for the winter okay again not how I would uh, handle Jeep ownership and if it was my Jeep but we'll see I think this uh, we need a uh, winch I think it definitely needs a winch future and upcoming projects here I'll give you another pause just so I can open the hood 
All right, so we're under the hood. You can automatically, you can see this uh, red wrinkle coat valve cover. It says for 4.0 liter, that's kind of a, that's a nice piece. k and filter, uh, charger kit, which is, I mean, it's ridiculous what they charge for these things, but it's, you know, pushing $300. Now that filter, um, I took it off and cleaned it. It was nasty, nasty, filthy. So for the guy for, you know, keeping the outside of the Jeep all so cleaned and, you know, the tires all polished and everything else, under here looks like it's been off-roading. It's just dirty, dusty, but he just didn't clean under the engine compartment, you know. Um, fan, you know, they painted the fan, looks like probably with, you know, brake paint or whatever, and you can see here the fuel rail was painted and a lot of that paint is flaking off and you now it gets hot under here. So this definitely needs a, a tune-up, but how nice is that gonna be? There's your oil filter right there. You know, there's your distributor and cap and all your spark plugs right on that side. Um, so these, again, more uh, wiring for the power amp. These uh, venerable four liter straight six Jeeps, you know, 190 horse for this generation, this fuel injected generation, air conditioning again, cause you need it. It's easy to work on. You know, this is just, you know, just gonna be a, a great, a great project. The support for the aftermarket, you know, the aftermarket support for the Jeeps is, just unbelievable. Sorry, my friends, I'm doing this with one hand. It's just unbelievable. And you know that, any of you guys are Jeep guys, and you know that you can get just about anything. I mean, I've already started ordering some stuff, you know, so, and again, this thing it came with, it came with nothing. Most of these come with, oh, I got a bikini top, I got a, I got a soft top, I got a hard top, nothing. I mean, he gave me some, some square fog lights to replace those round ones that would have come with it, which I am going to put back on. They're nice, nice, uh, Bosch fog lights and it looks like this had you know one of those panels that said Jeep on it at one time it kind of rubbed in here it's not perfect again but this is the uh, this is the uh, future project in the metal shop the Explorer is you know the daily driver is, is pretty much done so there's that um, but we'll have a we'll have a lot of fun uh, with this project and I will take you guys along with me for everything that I do with it and lots of stuff upcoming for the channel I hope uh, you consider, if you're new, please consider subscribing. Please uh, recommend my videos to, to friends. Give them a share. Give them a thumbs up if you liked them. Give them a thumbs down if you don't. But uh, please uh, tell me why in the comments. All right, my friends? Ah, the wind. And I'm freezing. So I'm going to end this video. As always, thanks for watching, my friends. And take care. Bye-bye.